You're listening to Amazing Radio. I'm delighted to say that we have the man behind our album of the week this week on the line. It's Slug, a.k.a. Ian Black. Ian, how you doing? I'm fine, mate. Yourself? Thank very, you very well. Much. Thank you very much for having me on your show. Today. It, it's a pleasure to have you on because you have the album of the week in uh, Amazing Radio, which means we're yeah. playing it in full this week. We've been playing little snippets as well all week. It's also the first release on Daylight Savings Records. Am I right in saying that? Yes, it is actually. Yeah, I'm I'm starting starting off this shindig with my release, and then I believe Dave has got his release coming soon afterwards. Good. That's Dave from Field Music, of course. Their own label is Daylight Saving Records. Now, Ian, let's speak about Thy Socialite. Tell us how it all started, how it began. Yeah, well, the, the germ for the album really started when I was having a conversation about Lou Reed's Berlin with our friend, who we know, Lucas Rennie. And he, and he absolutely detests the record to the point that he said, it sounds like Andrew Lloyd Webber on a bad drugs come down. <laughs> and I thought, wow, I need to somehow try and come up with an album like that because that, to me, sounds brilliant. Um, <laughs> and then it just got me thinking about all these other albums, which I love, with um, which um, their sort of audience really kind of um, uh, disliked such as um, Death of a Ladies Man by Leonard Cohen. That was one that he did with uh, Phil Spector. I absolutely love that record. Um, but the, a lot of his uh, fans really didn't enjoy that. And then he got us thinking about other ones, such as, you know, Slang by Def Leppard. I remember when that came out. <laughs> it was just New Jack Swing all over. And it was like, where's, where's, where's all the shredding guitar solos? That's what I was thinking when I was, you know, 13 13, I think it was when it came out. So I thought, what can I? So that that to me kind of it was exciting for me to think, what can I do to 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 create an album which would be quite difficult, possibly uh, for a slug listener to enjoy. Now, slug listeners like everything tend to like everything across the board. So musically, it's quite difficult to kind of um, do something which they'll be repelled with. Unless it was like soft rock from the eighties and some like soft rock from the seventies, so I was like, "Oh, that that sounds good. I can go down that route." And then I noticed there was a lot of um, kind of albums that came out with a, a kind of be positive about yourself sort of nature, um, kind of inspirational albums. So I thought I might just do an album where I allow myself to be very unlikable at times. And I thought if I can do that with soft rock, maybe that'll be that 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 to me sounds interesting um, for me to start doing. Because for me to create an album, I need to have some kind of um, kind of launch pad for me to do something. The 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 first the first album was me trying to do an album by you know by myself as a as a solo artist. Yeah, I did have help, but. Um, but that to me was kind of uh, the impetus to do that. Um, the second one, Higgledy Piggledy, was like, how much can I do within six months and just throw everything out the wall? Um, it, it didn't <laughs> went a bit longer than six months. Um, but that, again, that was like the idea behind it. So the third idea was this one. Well, and, um, it, I, really, I, really, a... I really enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah, we we've enjoyed what we've heard so far as well. And you would you just mentioned you would describe it as a, a soft rock record, but there's all sorts of instrumentation on there. I think is there anything that's not on there that you didn't manage to get on? Because there's all sorts of strings, synth guitars, everything, isn't there? Oh yeah, it was. I thought I would allow, allow myself to be really pompous and kind of over the top. Because a lot of people tend to shy away from that now as well. So I thought, oh, I wonder if I just, you know, think I'm Queen at their at their very worst. You know, um, I love Queen by the way, but like the the pomposity of it, like I love that era. But what if I allow myself to to be like that and just kind of put myself in the firing line of people to kind of stick the nose up and just like, who's he think he is? I was like, yeah, I'm I'm well into that. So um, what? I think I managed to get everything on. There are some tracks I didn't get on because of were Oh, I, I did do like a, a seven minute track at one point, but it was just it was just a mess. And I couldn't get <laughs> I couldn't 
I couldn't see how it would get fit with the rest of the album, bizarrely. And um, what's what's the ambition with this record in terms of what where would you like to see it get you or go to? Or I mean, I guess you you're already doing those things because it's 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 a physical release, isn't it? It's going to be yeah, yeah. coming out and it's dropping in people's letterboxes right now. You've got the tour. You're doing radio and press. I mean, as a musician in 2022, I guess those are the attainable goals, aren't they? 2023. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm usually happy with that as long as I can get my my music out and people enjoy it, and I don't become massively bankrupt in the process. Then, yeah, that 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 to me is a you know a win and a ticket box in my in my view. However, now since I thought about it. I want to play Wembley with 80,000 <laughs> 80, adoring fans wearing T-shirts with all my face on. That's 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 the goal from now on. You, you, you've um, you've inspired us, Frankie. I need to go bigger. <laughs> well, you know, festivals are, are, are an attainable goal, surely. Have, have any of them came knocking yet? And is festivals something you'd like to to play at? Yeah, I love playing festivals because um, they usually have free food on, so um, I can get some like free crisps. And maybe the odd like Fanta, so I really enjoy that. Um, and you know, there's not many good bands out there now, Frankie. I think I'm the last of a dying breed. I'm, <laughs> I'm the only one out there, so I didn't really like going to see other bands at festivals. Um, but you really you bring know, it live. You know what it's like. Yeah, you, you know what it's like, don't you? Yeah. With, yeah, I was um, going to say, you bring it live, though. You know, you get dressed up, you put everything in the, to, to the performance as well. And you've, I understand there's a bit of a change in the live setup as well this time around. Yeah, we've got um, Demo, um, Demo Waters had to leave the band, unfortunately, for personal reasons. And Reese um, went on a Berlin adventure, which I don't think he's ever going to come back from. <laughs> he's enjoying himself too much. I wouldn't I wouldn't bring him back... I, I, you know, it's like a prison sentence being in my band. So if he's enjoying himself, just like, mate, stay over there. <laughs> you look, don't come back here, you know. It's grim. It's grim here. So um, we've got Mr. John Sim on, on the drums. And we have Nick Duke now, both from Manchester. Um, so it's kind of... Logistically, I thought, which is the best way for us to kind of, you know, continue with a band without making more hurdles? And I thought, I oh, know, I'll... Um, I'll get lads from the Midlands, like around around the middle of England to be in the band. I thought that would really help things. But they're, they're great players and the lovely lads. And that's all I can ask for, really. Um, Ian, we can't wait for to hear the record in full and we won't have to wait too long. Just remind people of the tour and when you're going out doing that. It's February, right? It is February. So we've got, if you just bear with me, I'll have a look at my phone. Right. Right here. Okay, so on the 18th of February, man, we have Pop Rex in Sunland. It's going to be a it's going to be a hell of a show, man. Twenty third of Feb, the Lexington in London. There's about four tickets sold, so I'm hoping there's going to be another two hundred more. Twenty <laughs> fourth of February, the Hope and Ruin in Brighton. The twenty fifth of February, Ramsgate Music Hall in Ramsgate. It's such a great venue, man. 9th of March, Yes Basement in Manchester. I've actually sold a few tickets in that one. Um, the 10th of March, the Broodnell, the Broodnell in Leeds. And the 17th of March, we're going to finish this this adventure at the Hug and Pint in Glasgow. Well, so good. that's so that's them all. Yeah, it sounds good. It's uh, some some good venues there as well. I'm sure you've been before and some guys anyway. Um, yeah, it's a real good tour for a real good band. If anyone's listening out there, where's the best place to go to find you and your music? My house. If they turn up in my house, <laughs> I'll um I'll plug me up in and I'll I'll do a couple of songs for them. Um, but I'm gonna tell you where where I live. Um, realistically though, um, the best place to, to hear my to hear my uh, music is going to the shops, buying the record. You see what I'm doing here, Frank. Buy buy my record. Go home or five copies if you've got money, um, and put it in your CD player or vinyl record player. Turn the volume up and just blast it and and melt your own face. That, that's that's the best way to hear my music. I think there's no place better to stop the interview there. Well, thanks very much for joining us this afternoon, Ian. Thanks, Frankie. Thank you for for allowing me to show myself up again on uh, on on the uh, international media. It's great. I can't I can't stop doing this. <laughs>